All right, welcome back everyone. I'm glad you could join us. So today's project, or the beginning of this project, is something that I've had on my mind for quite a while. Last year we bought a Bobcat 322D a mini excavator for the property around here for digging holes and whatnot. And uh, it's been begging for an accessory that we've kind of wanted to put on there. And that is an excavator thumb. And uh, I've been looking around and uh, found a couple aftermarket ones, but either they're too big or too expensive or hard to get here in Canada. Contacted Bobcat and uh, they're having trouble finding parts for uh, these older excavators to begin with. So uh, we thought, or I thought, that I would try and make one myself. And, uh, you know, being the ultimate DIYer and uh, being of Dutch descent, which means economical, which means cheap, we're going to try and build one ourselves. Now, um, put together a bit of a plan, so we'll do a bit of an overview on how I think this is going to work. And uh, glad you could join us, and uh, let's get started. All right, so uh, after some thought, I uh, put together some parts that I found in the catalog at Princess Auto, which is a uh, one of the local suppliers for a DIYer like myself. You can find all kinds of little pieces there, but we'll go over each piece as we start fabricating them. But I uh, got my cylinder, which has a 14 inch extension and a 24 inch overall length pin to pin. Um, I made my little uh, template for what I thought would work. Now it changed a little bit as we uh, made it up and I had a family acquaintance uh, cut that on his plasma CNC. So that's uh, saved me a bit of time there. Now we have to drill the holes and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, we're cobbled together, but I already ran into one problem and that is the main pin. We're gonna do a shared pin uh, design and that is a one and a quarter pin that I bought, but the pin that is on the excavator is one and three sixteenths. So I don't know how to get around that quite yet because I can't find a one and three sixteenths pin anywhere. So maybe I might have to have that machine down. Anyway, let's go out to the excavator and I'll show you what I had in mind. So after a bit of thought, this is what I kind of came up with. I got some quarter inch Baltic birch, made a little bit of a template. Uh, there are 22 inches overall length. Uh, the, it's going to be a shared pin with the bucket. When the teeth are on the bucket, this point lines up with the point of the teeth. When the teeth are off the bucket, the thumb will extend past a little bit, but that's not such a big deal. Had to choose one or the other. So I chose it with the teeth so when I'm in the forest and picking up a log or a stump it'll kind of grab it with the teeth on both end. Um, this block here will be replaced with two one inch rods that I will drill and run through the ends and then weld on both sides. Uh, give it a little bit more strength because the, the torque and the tension on there is going to be quite something and my welding skills would probably not allow for a weld um, against the plate. Anyway that's the idea. Up and down, we have to still check a few clearances. We're kind of making it up as we go, but uh, that's my idea. One of the limitations that we have is uh, this dimension right here. You can't have too much of a, uh, a long cylinder because it doesn't fit for one. And for two, um, the idea is that we're going to have this up and then in its closed position, it will sit as close as possible to the stick. And we'll have to weld the tang on here for the cylinder here. And uh, hopefully this is the idea here, that uh, we'll get a good extension, probably to about 135 degrees. So one of the considerations if you want your thumb to extend or get as close as you can to, uh, to the stick, they're right here. Common pin, that's what we're hoping to do so that the geometry works wherever the bucket is, the points will come together. But this is a critical measurement because the tines have to clear the, that measurement there. And it's slightly different from one side to the other. So we have to make sure we have enough clearance that it'll be the same on both sides, but clear these two points when it swings up and down. So another critical measurement, of course, is uh, where the pin is and this length of the stick. You can't have your cylinder so long that it interferes where the boom and the stick um, come together because you don't want it to get crushed. So you have to uh, take this measurement and take that into account with the swing of your thumb. All right, so this is uh, a top view of the thumb itself. Uh, overall length of 22 inches and uh, these measurements are gonna change a little bit as uh, the parts I got, I measured them, so that's gonna get a little bit wider, but uh, you do need 
a, the clearance of six and five eighths to make it past the, the coupling on the top of the bucket. So that's your minimum distance clear. It's actually six and a half or six and three eighths, I think it was. But uh, six and five eighths would have uh, been the minimum you could have had. So we're gonna make that a bit wider. Uh, overall length is gonna get, overall width is gonna change. This measurement here is not gonna change as this is the cylinder uh, rod end width and uh, that's going to be this measurement right here. So we've got a couple of washers on each end. We're gonna put some cross tubes, weld them on, and then the pin will actually extend through. We'll put some cinch pins on each side to hold it in place so that if I have to take it off, it's just a matter of loosening it off. A uh, common pin here uh, for the bucket and for the thumb, uh, one and three sixteenths. And of course, the pin will go all the way through and then cinch pins on each side or however you decide to fasten it. But uh, that's the initial idea. Those measurements will change a bit. Now I'll uh, show you the profile of the tine itself. So here's the profile of the tines. And uh, I drew this on AutoCAD and generated a DXF file uh, for the gentleman that ran it on a CNC. And he put it in his program, worked his magic, and we've got two pieces cut. Uh, overall length, so this point here will line up with the teeth on the bucket. Uh, without it'll be approximately at that point there and then uh, overall length of 22 inches uh, three inch end here and five and three quarter to the top to the point uh, one and three sixteenths pin here which will be the common uh, pin with the bucket this will be the one inch pin for the cylinder and then I'm going to do two one inch pins and cross them across the tines and weld them on both sides to give it a little bit of lateral uh, stability but that's my plan for uh, the tines. So here's what we ended up with after um, I dropped the 3 8 plate off of to the young gentleman that cut them for me on a CNC plasma. Got two tines, uh, almost the same uh, dimensions, and uh, now they're very close. And what my idea was, I'm gonna grind the dross off from the plasma cutter. I'm gonna tack the two together using the top edge as my reference guide because the tines are just a little bit off on the ends which is not a big deal but we have to have a reference point so I'm going to use the top edge as my reference we're going to drill our one and a quarter inch hole our one inch for the shared pin and then we're going to drill a hole for a one inch cylinder pin and then two one inch holes for the cross support that we're going to put in but anyway start by grinding them and welding them together Okay, we've got the two pieces tacked together and uh, ground down to approximately the same size, took off some of the sharp edges. We'll do some more grinding after the holes are drilled, but now we're going to mark for the holes and drill them. Okay, so we've got our location for the two first holes laid out. We're going to do a one and a quarter inch hole here, uh, centered on the radius of course, so it's a three inch piece, so that's one and a half by one and a half. And this one is about a third of the length of the time. So uh, that's what it worked out to be on one of the neighbor's excavators, so that's what we're going to go with. Okay, we've got our uh, locations for the one inch bar that's going to be uh, giving the cross strength. We're just keeping it out of the way of the cylinder a little bit. I might move this one in just a little bit and move that one a little bit closer to the front just so that I have a little bit more clearance. got the one inch holes drilled that went relatively smoothly and uh, slow but steady wins the race okay well all the holes are drilled went relatively well nice clean holes for the two at the front I had to move a little bit forward so they would uh, clear the cylinder that's going to be put on the stick these are going to be the, uh, the cylinder uh, pin, and this is going to be the common pin with the bucket. So we're gonna break them apart, 
where I tack them together and then we'll do some final measuring. The edges are broken now and I've got these uh, cross tubes with uh, fittings for a grease arc. They're two and a quarter long which will uh, determine the entire length of or the width of the thumb itself. So um, we're going to center it over the hole, tack it in place and then uh, weld all the way around. Well, they're welded in place. Now keep in mind, this is not a welding tutorial and I'm just a professional homeowner here, so uh, just giving it my best shot. But they look okay and I've hit them with a hammer and they seem to be in place and uh, it's not really structural because the pin will go all the way through. It's more or less just to space it against the cylinder. This is where I'm headed with the design. I saved some one inch rod from an overhead garage door and uh, cut them three quarter inch longer so it'll protrude three eighths on each side and then I'll weld around the outside edge and on the inside edge on both sides of course and hopefully that'll take the torque that this unit's going to handle and uh, the inside dimension ends up being the cross tubes plus washers plus the length of your cylinder tube so this one ends up being around seven inches so we'll tack these rods in place next. Well first test fit not bad for a hack welder and uh, we just got the two rods at the front tacked in place and I just thought I'd see if it fit before I committed to welding all the way around but I think this is going to work. So happy with the progress and I have to clean up for the day so we'll pick it up tomorrow. We're going to cut some spacers for the thumb against the stick so we'll take that measurement. I've slid the thumb all the way over and uh, we'll take that measurement divided by two and whatever spacing we want to leave for movement or washers. So I'll quickly measure that. The gap ended up being uh, one and nine sixteenths, so we'll just call it one and a half for ease of measuring. And so I've scored it at three quarters of an inch and we'll cut two spacers out of this cross tube uh, to uh, put on either side of the thumb. Okay, we've got our spacers cut, and I'm not going to weld them today, it's too cold outside. But uh, we've got a little bit of play, and uh, it swings up and misses the bracket on both sides, so we know our spacing is correct. Now we have to uh, fabricate a couple more parts. Well, my excavator stick does not come with a factory bracket for the cylinder. So what I was planning to do is uh, I was going to use these tangs I bought with a one inch diameter hole and put a support piece on the back as uh, so it would not break off when it got pushed when you were using the thumb. But uh, having thought about it, that means that I have to cut a piece, fit it, weld the two pieces together. When I've got enough 3 8 material, I can just make the piece and drill the hole. So I think that's what I'm going to do instead. So this is what I've come up with. Uh, we're going to make two somewhat identical parts to start. We'll cut them out with uh, a grinding disc in the, or a cutting disc in the grinder. I started with the bandsaw, metal bandsaw, but the blade was drifting, so I stopped. But uh, we'll get them, a, you know, cut it out as close as possible, then we'll tack them together with the welder, and then we'll do the same as what we did with the tines on the thumb, and then we'll grind them the same. I'll drill the one inch hole, and then we'll have to cut a bottom out as well so that I can weld the two pieces together uh, to form the bracket that gets welded onto the stick. Finding a uh, long pin for an older excavator, one and three sixteenths seems to be an odd size. So um, I had to buy some one and three sixteenths cold rolled rod and I'm gonna make my own pin. So I bought 20 inches worth and we're gonna cut that in half and fabricate a pin. Well, we've uh, cut that 20 inch rod down to two 10 inch pieces. So now the idea is we're going to drill two holes, one on each end uh, for the cinch pins. And the uh, location of those, um, I would like them a little bit tight so that there's not too much uh, play in the uh, pin itself, that it doesn't rock back and forth and have excessive wear. So um, we'll try and get the holes as close to the washers as possible and still allow for easy um, removal of the pin. On the original pin, uh, the center of the hole 
is at about 13 sixteenths from the outside edge. So um, we can't do 13 sixteenths because that comes right to the washer. So we'll go to three quarters and uh, hopefully that's, uh, that's going to work. Well, that went relatively well. Happy with the result. The holes went uh, pretty easy. Did an 11 30 second hole for these uh, cinch pins and uh, very little play left to right. Maybe a 16th after it's all said and done, which I'm happy about. Uh, gonna grind the edges just to clean up the sharp edges a little bit and uh, wish I could get to some welding, but it's too cold outside. So we're on to the next step. So now that we've got the bucket pin finished, we have to do the cylinder pin and uh, we have to do pretty well the same thing except in one inch rod. So we'll go ahead and do that. Well, the pins are done, it turned out okay. A one inch cylinder pin and a one and three sixteenths bucket pin. Once the weather warms up, we'll uh, grind the sharp edges off and uh, weld the spacers in place. And then it's on to the next step. Here's the bracket that I've come up with for the stick for the cylinder end. And uh, what we did was we just attacked the two pieces together and uh, ground them round and made them the same, drilled the hole and then we ground the welds off and now we're ready to put the bracket together. Well we've got everything fitted and squared up so I'm just going to uh, tack it together and then I'll finish welding the entire seam. All the welding is done. Now again don't take any lessons from me because uh, if you did you'd probably fail your apprenticeship uh, test. At any rate, I uh, don't think the welds will hold. Some of them are pretty good. Uh, I think I'm running out of gas in my welder, so some of the last welds had a couple of bubbles in them. But at any rate, I think it will hold for the time being, and uh, we've got uh, one more weld to do, and that's to put the bracket on the stick, so that's the next step. We're gonna fit this to the stick now. Well, from concept to completion, I think it turned out okay. Uh, very happy with the result. We got it painted. I got to put a couple of grease irks in on the cylinder and on some of the cross tubes. And I think we're ready to put it on the excavator. Well, if it's not one opportunity, it's another. And by opportunity, I mean obstacle. So the original pin from Bobcat that was in here that was holding the bucket on gets greased through the end and it's machined through to a little hole in the pin to grease the cross tube. So seeing as we've replaced the pin, now I have to find a way to grease this, this fitting. So I'm going to drill a hole, tap it, and put a grease circ in there. Okay, another opportunity. So we've got it approximately where it has to go, and uh, seems like everything's gonna fit, except that there's a seam on the stick here that uh, is interfering with the bracket. So instead of grinding that away, I'm going to uh, grind a groove in the bottom of the bracket. So I ground a groove out of the back of the bracket to clear that uh, seam on the arm. So hopefully that'll uh, be enough to get it flat against the uh, stick. I've got the uh, thumb and uh, the cylinder and the bracket uh, placed on the thumb, just clamped for now, just so that we can uh, check out the uh, geometry and making sure everything works with the clearances. So I'll uncurl the bucket and just see how far uh, the thumb will extend. Okay, that's uh, as far as it goes. All the data that I found on the internet is on average, they should be at about 135 degrees. I think I'm a little bit past that, but uh, you know, you don't have to fully extend it either. So uh, I think that'll work. I'm just going to check clearances and then we'll uh, clean off the stick uh, paint and then we'll weld it in place. Well, the bracket's welded onto uh, the stick. Uh, I had to weld it three times to fill the gap. 
But uh, otherwise, I think that the weld should hold. We're gonna find out the first thing we pick up, of course. But uh, we're gonna put the hydraulic hoses on next. From the original auxiliary hydraulics, I replaced the couplers. So they're both brand new. And I put on some new hoses, which I thought was going to be half-inch OD hose. Turns out to be half-inch ID hose, so it's a bit thick and stiff. And I might have to replace that with a bit longer and a bit thinner. Uh, at any rate, we'll make it work for the time being. And uh, the welds seem to be holding up. We're going to uh, try picking up just a small piece of log I got laying around. But overall, I think we have a successful homemade excavator thumb. Well, that concludes our homemade excavator thumb project. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. It was a great project. I learned a lot about hydraulics, welding, metalwork, the bobcat itself. So really happy with the outcome. And we're going to put it to some great use in the forest in the, this spring and summer. And uh, we hope that you really did enjoy this video. And if you did, we'd love it if you would subscribe, like, and share. And join us again for another video coming soon. Thanks for watching.